Hey guys, welcome back to my project. I'm Eric here. Uh, as a publisher, Yesterday Team continues to publish images through the MQTT broker and multiple clients subscribe to Yesterday Team's topic and display the image data it delivers on the screen. Uh, I made the Yesterday Team view using Flur. Uh, from the left, it's Mac app, iOS app, and Android app. All are built on each platform based on the one Flur source code. Uh, it's possible to build the application for Windows, but I haven't included it in this project because it's still a beta version. Maybe next time I'll try it. Uh, in the raw app corner of the screen, you can see which screen the es 30 cam is looking on. If the MQTT broker is ready, the system can be configured very quickly. Uh, with the es 30 cam, the size of the VGA resolution of JPEG image is approximately 20 kilobytes. I don't think there is anything like this to test continuous data transmission. It's really good for testing. Uh, the MQTT broker can be installed in a variety of the environments. Uh, it will be good to configure and use the MQTT environment using Raspberry Pi. Uh, also, the AWS IoT provides MQTT broker allows you to use it without having to install MQTT directory on EC2. I recommend you to use this way too. Uh, this video will cover the AWS IoT connection on ESP32CAM and the Flutter project will be the next video. Uh, let's get started. Uh, this is the current system configuration. One ESP32 cam becomes a publisher and constantly publishes image data to the specific topic ESP32 slash cam on the bus zero. Uh, the clients who subscribe to ESP32 cam's topic can receive this data. All clients may subscribe to the same topics and do with the information as they please. The MQTT broker acts as a simple common interface for everything to connect to. It's very simple, but it can be very powerful. Uh, MQTT defines three levels of quality of service. Uh, messages may be sent at any QS level, and clients may attempt to subscribe to topics at any QS level. Uh, this means that the clients choose the maximum QS it will receive. For example, uh, if a message is published at QS2 and client is subscribed with QS0, the message will be retrievable to that client with QS0. Of course, the higher levels of QS are more reliable, but involve a higher latency and have a higher bandwidth requirement. Uh, in this project, for the raw latency, the QS level is set to 0, which is the default. Uh, this is a source code that we tested in the previous project. I will complete the publisher of es 32 cam with this code. Uh, the first thing to do is to set the ID of the client to connect to the MQTT broker. Uh, let me go to the secrets header file. Uh, I set the client ID of this device as my es 32 cam on the bus zero. All clients must connect with the unique ID. Uh, if you connect with the existing ID, the previous client will lose the connection automatically. Uh, first, I'm going to work on ESP32CAM so that it can be used. Uh, I will load the example source code of ESP32CAM and copy the parts required to initialize it. I'm sure that you guys are familiar with this source code. We will try this one at least once when we start ESP32CAM first. Uh, you can see the camera web server project on the right. I will copy the pin information connected to ESP32CAM. If you go to the camera pin header file, there is a camera model AI thinker. Uh, copy this part and paste it to the top of my project. Uh, don't forget to copy the ESP32 cam header as well. Uh, here is the necessary part to initialize the camera. Uh, there are only a lot of lines due to the specifying pins connected to the hardware, but nothing special. Uh, I will make a function called camera in it and put them in it. Uh, set the resolution of the image to be received from the camera to VGA, which is 640 by 480. Uh, set the quality to 10, which is the best, and set the number of the frame buffers to 2. Uh, remove this unnecessary part. Uh, if the camera is not properly initialized, we will restart the ESP32. The reason is to restart the system if there is a problem so that it can be initialized again. Uh, I will create a function called grab image and complete the part where I get the image from the camera. Uh, sends data only when the frame buffer is not null and format type is JPEG. 
Uh, I print this part to the console to see the size of the image. Uh, this client is an MQTT client. Uh, among the overloaded functions of the public method, uh, byte data can be sent directly. Uh, for the parameter, the first one is topic, the second one is data, and the third one is the data length. There are other options to set QoS. Please take a look at the MQTT client part. Uh, returns true as the result value if published normally, and false if not published. Uh, if false returns occur, uh, there may be a problem with the client's connection, so it restarts the system to allow it to operate again. Uh, finally, uh, release the frame buffer from memory to end this function. Uh, oops, typo here. Uh, let me add the grab image function in the loop. The grab image will be invoked only when the client is connected. Uh, does it make sense? No reason to do the grab action without it. Uh, let me initialize the camera first before starting connecting AWS. Uh, I haven't decided which topic to use for publishing yet. Uh, let's deal with this part. Uh, the camera part is all done, so I will close the project on the right. Uh, I will specify the topic as ESP32 slash cam underbar zero. Uh, this will replace the value of the first parameter in the publish method of the function of the grab image. Uh, so far so good. Uh, let's clean up the source code. I don't use the Arduino JSON. Uh, one important thing is here, uh, we need to set the buffer size for the MQTT client. Uh, this requires the size of the data you send. Uh, if you send data larger than the buffer size, a problem will occur. Uh, create the MQTT client with the new buffer size. Uh, let me go back to the grab image function. Uh, if the image size is larger than the buffer size, I will ignore it. Uh, this allows the MQTT client to keep working without a problem. Uh, let's look at the code again from the beginning. Uh, after connecting Wi-Fi, register AWS IoT device credentials. Uh, connect to AWS IoT endpoint. No message handler is required because this device does not subscribe to any topics. Uh, let me delete it. Uh, it does subscribe to any topics, so I'm deleting this too. I'd like to set the clean session. Uh, if the clean session is true, then all subscriptions will be removed for the client when it disconnects. The fourth option is only possible in QS1 or QS2. Uh, I'll put in a new line to make it easier to check each step on the console. Uh, restart the system even if there is a problem with the AWS connection. Uh, remove unnecessary functions, public message, and message handler below. Uh, all looks good. Uh, the ESP32 cam client seems to be, have been completed. Uh, the ESP32 cam device is currently connected. Uh, let me build and let's see the result. Uh, start the Wi-Fi connection. It's connected and connects to AWS IoT right away. Uh, it's connected to AWS IoT and starts publishing right away. Uh, you can see the size of the, each image and the result to see if it has been published without any problems. If a problem occurs, the return will be zero and the system will be restarted immediately. The problem I experienced was that I wanted to make the bubble size very big, but it was not easy to control due to the insufficient resources. Uh, if the buffer size has big enough, it will be easier to send the larger data. Uh, this completes the ESP32 cam client. I will finish the Flutter app in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching. See you soon.